If you know me, I've been using calendar blocking for a long, long time and I've always listed it as one of my favorite time management techniques out there and something that can benefit almost anyone. So calendar blocking is basically the art of setting a specific task for a specific time block in your calendar or your schedule. You can do this on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, you name it. The importance of calendar blocking is basically creating a budget for your time like you'd create a budget for your money and your finances. So basically what you want to do is make sure that you have an overview of your week and you know exactly what you should be working on in any specific day of the week and any specific hour. Calendar blocking is really beneficial because it gives you that bird's eye view of your time. It really allows you to see how you're balancing out your life, whether you're dedicating way too much time for your work, whether you're dedicating way too much time for leisure. And it also gives you a really good understanding of how much time you're going to take to complete a certain task or a certain project. The problem is when you thought you were never someone, you know, who fits any of these three exceptions and suddenly you become one of those people and calendar blocking is not suitable for you anymore. If you've watched a video I published around two weeks ago, I went through this exact problem. So I went from being someone who had very predictable energy levels, who felt really motivated throughout the day, and I just had a sudden drop of energy because of my pregnancy in my first trimester, and that really impacted my time management. And calendar blocking, which was always something that felt incredibly right for my life, suddenly it just stopped working for me completely. Okay, so the first thing that happened for me was that my energy levels completely went crazy in my first trimester. So I was someone who always felt very energized in the morning and I had that energy kind of, you know, going down in the afternoon slowly and gradually and then suddenly i became someone who had peaks random peaks of energy in the afternoon someone who was feeling very lethargic in the morning so i could not predict my energy anymore and if i was not able to predict when i was going to feel energized and motivated then i could not also predict any sort of scheduling routine around those energy levels which is one of the principles behind calendar blocking also, I started to sleep more and I started taking these random naps during the day. And this basically meant that if I had a task scheduled between, you know, 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. and then suddenly I had to take a nap during that time because I just could not keep my eyes open, that task would never get done. And when I was trying to reschedule it, I didn't have any kind of buffer time in my calendar anymore because this happened almost every single day. It was not an exception anymore. Another thing that happened was, besides my system becoming practically useless, looking at my calendar with this calendar blocking technique made me realize I was just failing at life. And every time I looked at my calendar, I felt like this huge failure. So it was definitely something that was becoming toxic for me. It was not helping me anymore. And I just had to get rid of the calendar blocking altogether. Okay, so what did I replace my time management system with? So after completely abandoning calendar blocking as a time management technique, I went ahead and I bought a bullet journal. I bought a typical Molsky notebook one day per page. You probably remember a video I filmed around in September where I made the shift from calendar blocking to a bullet journal. And here I try to adopt a very simple time management method and planning method. So first of all, I decided to write down three tasks or three main goals for every single day. Those were the only three things I was worried about accomplishing. I was not thinking about adding anything else to my daily list. Also, I was not setting up any kind of deadline in terms of hours and I was not scheduling these tasks. So. I was able to basically accommodate any kind of energy fluctuations around them and the only goal I had was I have to finish these somehow 
today. And what happened, of course, was some things had to be scheduled uh, because sometimes I had appointments or I had a meeting. And in those cases, I could not run away from those appointments. So those three tasks were something that I was adding up on top of those pre-scheduled appointments. I also went for the typical bullet journal technique uh, in terms of how I was creating my daily spreads. So first of all, no monthly spreads, no weekly spreads. I was just focusing on having a single page to-do list every single day. And that was, you know, it was enough for me. So I used the typical system by writer Carol, which meant basically one dot when I had a task to be completed, I would cross out the dot whenever that task was completed. And if I was not able to go through one of those three tasks per day, I would migrate that task to the following day with the arrow symbol. I can tell you, however, that this was underwhelming <laughs> for me. Um, you know, when you go from an incredible productive stage in your life and you're feeling so motivated and so inspired to work, and then suddenly it's like your body and your mind, they're not in the right place, they're not helping you, you feel like there's such a big, you know, it feels like you're backtracking so much. But it was definitely what I needed at the time because calendar blocking just wasn't suitable for me anymore. And the thing here is, it did work. This method worked wonders for me. As soon as I really reduced my expectations about my work, as soon as I understood I was not able to accomplish as much as I was able to accomplish before, I gained this intense momentum. I was able to start from three tasks per day, plus appointments, plus scheduled tasks and meetings. And I was able to go from three tasks per day to four tasks per day to five tasks per day. It was a very slow process, but it was so helpful in making me feel like I was in control once again of my productivity. And this, of course, also resulted in this kind of snowball effect. As I gained confidence in myself, I was proving to myself I was able to do this. And as I gained that confidence, I was able to do more. And as I was able to do more, I was gaining even more confidence in myself. So even if I started simple, what happened was it was kind of these incremental changes, this momentum that I was building that gave me the opportunity to use a completely different time management technique, a new completely different planning technique, and make it as powerful as calendar blocking, which was something entirely different that I was using before. So this happened around six months ago. And since September, I mean, since August, I have never been back to calendar blocking anymore. I still think of it as one of the best time management techniques I've ever used in my life, but I'm no, I know I'm not ready to use it again. I'm still keeping the same list-based system. It worked wonders for me during my first trimester, so it's something that I'm just, I'm holding on to it for dear life because I've proved myself that I was able to use this successfully and I do not want to change something that is working phenomenally for me right now. And now the question is, will I ever return to calendar blocking? And the answer is, I have no idea. And I think that after baby is born, maybe the system, this list-based system will not work for me either. And I'll have to change things around. Maybe I won't even have a system for a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll have to go back to calendar blocking for some reason. The thing is, I have no idea. And that's why I always say, there is no perfect time management technique or method. What matters is that you find something that works for you and that seamlessly integrates into your lifestyle and your priorities and your current needs. And your current needs may be very different today than they will be one year from now or from what they were in the past. Another thing that maybe will happen is that maybe I'll have to use calendar blocking and adapt it to my current reality. So for instance, maybe I'll just calendar block a few days per week when I'm more focused on work and I leave my schedule pretty empty for three days per week or four days per week or whatever. 
until I get back to work, of course. Maybe I'll just have to drop it all together. Maybe I'll even use a very complex system of color blocking because maybe that's exactly what I need. So, you know, I have no idea. I actually have no clue. So the key message here today is that calendar blocking is an awesome system. If it's working for you, do not leave calendar blocking. If calendar blocking never worked for you in the past, it's either because you're not using the technique appropriately, and if that's the case, you can check out the videos on calendar blocking I've made in the past where I go through typical mistakes people make when using this technique. But it may also be the case that you're someone whose priorities, lifestyle, and the stage of life you're in is not compatible to with this specific time management technique right now. And if it's not compatible, it's not your fault. You just have to find something that really works for you and that makes sense to you. There are so many things out there to try. And, you know, if you need my help, I actually provide that kind of support. I'm kind of an accountability partner for people who are trying to look for their perfect time management technique. Um, but this can also be a journey that you're taking individually and that's perfectly fine too. Despite my new task management system, I also plan for a lot of long-term projects in Notion. I filmed a complete workspace tour and I show you in detail how I organize everything from dashboards to project planners, how I establish my YouTube and coaching workflow, home organization and so much more. You can get access to that full video on Nebula, the only place where it will ever be available. All of the videos I post on Nebula are also ad-free and sponsor-free. All you have to do is search for this icon to know you're watching a video that still isn't available on YouTube and this icon to know you're watching something that will never be available anywhere else. And of course, I'm not alone in Nebula. There are many other creators there too, with video catalogs that have the same perks. And you can find other productivity creators and many people from the STEM community over there. This is the only place where we creators can experiment with new content without being worried about YouTube's algorithm and can create the videos you want to see. This is also how you can support us directly. If you sign up for Nebula using the link below, you can get it for around $3 a month and you'll get access to exclusive content and resources you can't find anywhere else. For instance, my Notion Complete Workspace Tour video will provide you with the link for a Notion workspace that has a lot of resources, printables, and so much more. So don't forget to click the link down below to get started, and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!